Let's see. One second. Okay, okay. Try okay. Again. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep. So that should work now. Oh. Can you see my screen? Yes. It's well. No? No. Um, hold on. Oh, share the screen. Oh, I have to quit. Oh, no. Sorry, I'll be back. Uh, this is okay. Let's wait for Ming Xuan for a moment. Yeah, in the afternoon session, we'll have a couple of uh, invited speakers and also. We'll have oral talks from the winners of our challenges. Okay. All right. So I hope for this time it will work. If not, I can, I can make you a, uh, uh, sorry, one uh, second. Who's uh, this? Your co-host. Okay, can you try again? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, good. All right, thank you. All right, so thanks for inviting me to give a talk at this workshop. So today I'm going to mainly talk about some work that we, we recently um, finished. And I, if time allows, I will also show some of uh, our ongoing work. So this work is about uh, how to utilize semantic matching and object cost cemetery and we solve two problems at the same time. And um, this work was published in 3 pr and uh, um, PEMI. Okay, so uh, okay, before actually before I go, I want to show you some slides. Uh, I want to show you this first. This is, uh, hold on a second. I want to give you an overview. Okay. So the main idea of uh, the f I'm going to talk about several um, paper that we recently published. So the main idea is to use visual inco information at different level, and so you will find we use information from pixel level and region level to solve the same thing. For example, we will solve. Uh, semantic matching and cost imitation at the same time. So semantic matching operates on the pixel level and cost imitation obviously uh, operates on region level. And we want to utilize all the information and solve these two problems together. And later on, uh, I will also show you some results that we use both pixel label and region label information for a segmentation of a video object segmentation or tracking. So basically, if you work on tracking, many you are, you operate on region or bounding boxes. And and on the other hand, if you have a, a pixel label correspondency, then you will be able to solve um, a matching or correspondency problem. And so the question is how you can utilize both problems and solve them together and complement all the information. And Another thing that we often use is to use information we can find from two consecutive image in a video or actually several image uh, in a sequence, or you can take uh, uh, two views of the same object and then utilize the information there. And then you want to find some correspondency and, and some semantic information so that you can use that for segmentation or for tracking. 
And the whole idea is nothing but, again, you will see that we use all the tricks uh, in all these paper. We exploit consistency in appearance, geometry, semantics, and also color information. And, and the other thing we often use is to use uh, forward, backward uh, matching. So you can map one image to the other, and then you can map back. And you try to find some uh, so-called, uh, if you will, uh, cycle consistency. And, and another, another word that we work on is to adapt the trend model that we learn from other tasks to new tasks. And so if time allow, I will show some results that we have. And yeah, so so basically I'm gonna many I'm gonna mainly talk about the first work, a show match and segment. And then I will uh, briefly touch on um, the work we covered in NIPS and uh, CVPR 19 and uh, IGSV 2020. Uh, okay, so the first one is So the first one I'm going to talk about is this one. Okay. okay, so yeah, so as I mentioned, so the main idea is that, okay, so in this work, what we want to do is we want to solve semantic matching and object called semantation at the same time. So um, uh, the input is a collection of image containing an object of a specific object uh, classes. And, uh, we want to uh, establish correspondence between object instance and second uh, and use them for segmentation. And um, yeah, the, the basically the setting is is based on a weekly supervised learning. And all we have is that uh, the the a pair of image or more images contain instance of the same object class, and then we use that for uh, use that as supervision supervisory signal for training. Oh, stop me anytime if you have a question, okay? Okay, so um, so semantic matching or correspondence has been solved um, in many contexts. Early where many use SIFT and all the other handcrafted features, if you will, uh, to find correspondency. Uh, but the problem is that um, it's often it's open sensitive to some background character. And the question is that if you have foreground uh, mask, then certainly uh, this will help uh, the semantic matching problem. And on the other hand, for core for co segmentation problem, of what you have is uh, two images of the same instance, but the prop, but because we often operate on regions, and so then oftentimes only the most discriminated region are matched and segment out. So, but on the other hand, if you have more correspondence between these two images, and then that will certainly help, uh, you, that can certainly help out to find out the right mask. Okay, so, yeah, so as I mentioned, so for semantic matching, there are a lot of work. I mean, uh, early on there are, um, you know, you can use SIFT, you can use HOG and use all the other features for matching. And uh, you, I mean, in the early day, they they even uh, operate on the unsupervised setting, and in recent year, they uh, they operate on the semantic matching. And so basically, you want to uh, you you want to given instance of the same object class, and you want to find the correspondence, and that allows you to account for large shape variation or appearance variation. And in recent years, then there are. Uh, later on, when uh, AlexNet and all that come came out, then uh, people can start using SIF feature, and then you know, people start to use CNN feature, and um, so and you can also and, and in recent years they even use end-to-end -end, um, approach to learn the feature and uh, solve matching at the same time. Uh, the problem is that often time it re well it requires manual correspondence and notation for training. And also, it doesn't adapt well to unseen objects. So yeah, so recent method, as I so um, recent method, as I mentioned, so you can solve these two. You can learn the feature and solve the matching at the same time, and then uh, and you can also use more um, powerful transformation such as thin play spline or the others for matching, and and so and you, you can also sometimes you can use a multi-scale feature for that. And so in, the, in this work, 
we built it on top of the work by Roku, and so that allows us to find some matching with large shape or appearance of variation. And um, the existing semantic matching method um, often doesn't, often do not work well when there are uh, significant uh, big one cluster. And also um, it doesn't uh, perform well when there are inconsistent bidirectional matching. Okay, so, and on the other hand for object segmentation, so early on people, well different group use graph-based method and construct graph or use clustering for matching so that you can uh, do core segmentation. And, and so, yeah, so early on, in early days, people use, uh, use simpler feature and later on use the um, deep feature as you know in many other field, okay? And it, yeah, so one thing is that it doesn't have end-to-end -end trainable pipeline. And in recent years then, um, there are several methods that leverage CNA model with CRF and other um, or attention model to uh, for object course segmentation. And um, these are some of the uh, representative work and the, the intention is basically uh, these methods require foreground mask for training and not adequate and oftentimes do not work well for unseen object categories. So in this work, we want to solve these two problems at the same time. And so basically there are many, there are three uh, modules in, in our, um, in this, in our proposed method. So there is encoder and there's a transformation predictor and there's a decoder. So this is, encoder is, is pretty straightforward and decoder is also somewhat um, straightforward except that we, uh, I'll explain that in detail. And we incorporate transformation layers so that we can estimate the, um, to account for a shared variation. And this is, and then we use the information from these two networks to uh, supervise each other. So that's the main idea in this work. Okay, uh, so then, um, so he, we have one um, semantic uh, matching network and one for, this one is for semantic matching, this one is for uh, segmentation. And uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, so the input will be an image pair containing objects of a specific category, object category. Um, and then we want to, con we, the output will be correspondency and also um, segmentation results. And we only use image labels for vision. Basically, we only assume that, okay, there, each, there is a, the input will be an image pair and the image pair contain instance of the same object category. And specifically, we, we here we assume there is one instance and certainly we can, uh, in our uh, ongoing work, we want to extend that to the cases where an image contains several instances. And this is pretty similar to all the co segmentation work and the semantic messaging setup. Open time, you, up, you implicitly assume there's one instance, and later on, you can extend that for multiple instances. Okay, for the encoder, so basically, given the input pair, we first we use this encoder to find the correlation be, uh, between all the features. And so this is, so this is useful and then we will be able to find out how, um, how, how uh, at each image location, how uh, they are correlated. So, and this, so this part, and this, this is also quite standard. Basically you have feature, the feature, and then you um, use Mac tooling and then you have feature map. And then over there, then you compute simply just by that product and then find the correlation in between any features. And, um, from that, from those features, then we would we use the work by Roku to find geometry to find um, correspondency, and so to predict. Okay, given this feature map, how do we pre how do we transform the feature map from this in from this instance to the other? And so we would have a from A to B, so from image A to image B, and from B to A. So, and this, as as I mentioned, so this base, this work is based on, on the work by Roku. 
So this, yeah, so this is the basically uh, the one we use now. So the transformation and um, offline, so this is also one trick that uh, people often use. So given image, then how do you, how do you find the correspondence? Well, I mean, you can also synthetically generate some warping result. And then from that, you can, you can learn how to um, match between uh, these two. I mean, so you can apply TPS or you can use FI. Well, in this case, I'll use TPS and you can sometimes use AFI. And then because you, when you apply that, you know the ground truth. And then from this, then you learn how to, given this pair, how do you find the right correspond, um, the parameter. And so this, and so this, uh, so this turned out to be quite useful. And um, we also use this for video too. And uh, um, we start with some modification. But this basically allows you to swap and then match uh, between any two um, instances of the same class. Okay, and so uh, once um, so once we find out correlation and the correspondence, and we uh, we for the segmentation network, we concatenate the correlation map and also the feature map together and use that as an input. And then we want to learn, we basically want to train this network such that we, we can um, learn the mask. And so this is, uh, this is what we use to pre decoder. And so now the question is that, okay, so if we have perfect mask, foreground mask, then we suddenly can match well. And if we have perfect semantic matching, then we suddenly can mask, find a uh, perfect mask. So these two problems are related and we want to use we want to uh, utilize the information from each module and then use them together. And in addition, we also want to um, mask. We want to also want to use both appearance and mask information because uh, when you match image based on appearance, if you had a mask and from both instance, then you can transform one to the other because we have transformation, then it, that would be uh, able to help you to better, uh, to better find the, uh, the right mask. And I'll show you the detail in a bit, okay? All right, so, uh, so there are, uh, so for, okay, so for semantic matching uh, network, so uh, there are two losses. So basically we have matching loss uh, guided by foreground and we have a, a forward backward a consistent loss. And if you will, you can call it a uh, cycle consistency. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, you have image pair and then you have these are the correlation and you found correlation, you find a geometry, uh, you have geometry predictor and you have transformation. And so then this, then we will have and from this, and we take this feature, encoded feature and correlation and use that input and to find out mask. And here, this will be the, um, here will be the matching a loss, and the other one I'll, I'll explain in a bit about a consistent, uh, cycle consistent loss. Okay, so um, so as I mentioned, so when you want to match appearance, if you have mask, uh, so that you can guide, you can emphasize on the foreground and the emphasize pixel from the background, then certainly you can match things better. So um, yeah, so the idea is nothing but mean to minimize the distance between the corresponding feature based on estimated geometry transformation, and and so we leverage the predicted object a mask to suppress uh, negative impact from the uh, clutter. Okay, so given uh, the estimate ge geometric transformation TAB from image A to image B, then basically we want to then we want to, uh, uh, we consider co correspondence between uh, two points, P, this is uh, one point in image A and one point in image B. So this transformation will take one point from A, from image A to image B. And we want to make sure that they are ma they are, their uh, distance is uh, smaller than uh, the matching result is within certain uh, uh, threshold. So basically their uh, matching result will be within some uh, uh, pixel pixel range, and likewise we can do we can do from B to A. So for the, so for this uh, so from this then we 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 use this mask from A to B and also the correlation from A to B. This is based on appearance and this one based on mask. Then basically then this would 
this allow us to compute a of um, mass for one mass guided um, similarity. And so this will be how well we can match point A to uh, of one point from image A to image B. And so likewise, so this is from uh, image a pixel from image A to image B, and likewise we can do we can operate from image uh, for pixel from image B to image A, and uh, both are guided by the mask. So this basically utilizes not only the uh, the appearance but also uh, the mask. So this is um, the measuring loss uh, with uh, four four one guided with the mask guided uh, result, and so we add another term about uh, cycle consistency. So the idea is to regularize network um, by enforcing training or by uh, enforcing predicted geometry transformation to be consistent. So what it is is that you have a point in, you have a point from image A and you can transform through to B and then obviously you can use the other transformation from B to A to transform back to A. So then you wanna make sure that, okay, uh, you can map it back. And this, this we also use this uh, trick in our video uh, network, uh, which I'll explain in a bit uh, later on. So again, okay, so this is nothing. So you have so you have one point in image A and map to B, and then from B to A, and then the uh, the the pixel should be pretty close if if you can uh, learn the transformation well. And so this is one loss function that you, that we can that we add in. To, uh, to for semantic matching. Okay, and so this idea, you can you can extend that to use multiple layer, uh, uh, you can use, you can extend the same idea to triplet or more. So basically from A to B and B to C, and then you can from C to A, and then the mapping should be pretty close. If everything, if you can learn all the pair pretty well uh, between A and B, B and C and C and A. So this is a uh, transitivity Consist we add in this trans this consistency uh, in in training. So um, to be exact, during training we sample about one hundred uh, coordinates for um, computing both forward backward consistency and also uh, trans transitivity uh, consistency. And. So, uh, so let's for semantic matching, and then for course segmentation, basically, as uh, as I mentioned, we after we encoded uh, the image with features, and we all, and com after we compute correlation, then we concatenate them together and use them together to train this uh, network, and we adding uh, perceptual contrastive laws uh, to train to train this network. So, um, uh, so this basically after we concatenate the feature, then basically the idea is. We want to uh, uh, we we want to um, not only want to match both image, but we also want to separate uh, the mass uh, from four, um, between. We want to enhance the uh, difference between foreground and background. So basically, between these two instances, we want them to be match well. But then, be within each instance, between foreground and background, we want to be we want them to be as different as possible. So so yeah so. Basically, we want to we want to estimate MA and MB, and then you see, and then we also want to use transformation, and so that even MA, and then you have transformation, then you can map to B, and then you want to match them and see whether they are close or not, and that way you can do uh, B to A, and also as I mentioned, so you want to separate a foreground from background, so we we have some trick for that. So so here, so the the thing we use are like this. So basically, we to uh, learn this network. So we want to have a high foreground object similarity across images. And within image, we want to have high foreground background discrepancy within each image. So as I mentioned, so between, uh, between these two, the, uh, the mass should be similar, but within each image, we want to, uh, we want to enhance their uh, foreground background uh, discrepancy. So, so basically, um, these are some of the details. So basically, we, we first we uh, generate an object mask. Um, we, so we have a, so for this we have an um, uh, object image and background image, and so we want to we want to enhance the object um, image between two uh, between two image, and also want to um, enhance the distance between I O and I B. 
So, so, so here's a, a trick. So basically, there are, this one is basically uh, between the mask, uh, between two image, and uh, this, this is between the foreground, and this is between foreground and background. So basically here, basically for the, for image A, the object image and image B, ima uh, and the object image of, of a second image, they will want, in the future space, we want them, we want their distance to be as small as possible. But on the other hand, uh, for each one of them, for the object image, in, for the object image in the uh, in first image, uh, we want to we want the visual distance to be as different as possible from the background image of the same image. And likewise for the other one, we do that. So these are the so these are the supervision we add in so to learn that. So basically here the example. So you have both you have a foreground and your background. So you want to enhance the, you want to in, make sure in the visual space, the distance between these two are as, uh, it is as small as possible. But then the distance between this and this is as large as possible. And so, um, so this is the, the, it turns out to be quite effective uh, for training this segmentation network. And I will show you the sensitivity analysis for all the parameters. Okay. So in addition, we we uh, we also want to have a cross network training. So basically, we have semantic matching and we have cross segmentation, and we we further use the um, con contrasted loss between these two images to uh, to uh, to leverage uh, to co train uh, sorry to train these two uh, tasks at the same time. Okay. Uh, so basically, we leverage a dense correspondence field estimate from semantic matching, and we use that as a provision for uh, cost segmentation. So here's the idea. So, so, um, so basically from, uh, from both image, we have mask A and B, and this is from cost segmentation network. And also from the image, from semantic matching, we have a, we have transformation A, B, and B, A. So basically for the mask in the first image, we can use the transformation to map, to transform this map to uh, image B. And so then this, we want this guy, because this guy basically, uh, we, take, we take MA and we apply TAB to MA to get, uh, to obtain this, this guy in, to obtain the ma a transform mask in second image. And certainly we want, want this to be as similar as possible. And likewise, we can do the other way around. So this is, and the other are just, uh, so this is just a um, binary across entropy. But basically the, the idea is that between mask and we also have a transformation. So we want that, we want those masks to be as similar as possible. And so, th so that's all we have. So basically the, these are all the losses that I described, matching loss based on, based on appearance. And then we have cycle consistency and these two are mainly used for semantic matching, and uh, we and and we also have a constructed loss and um, a, um, and cross uh, network uh, consistency loss. So, so here are some results. So, um, for for evaluation uh, for semantic matching, we use PCK. Uh, this is a quite standard for uh, for matching uh, literature. And for segmentation, we use Jaguar score and also precision. And for data set, for semantic matching, we use TSS. This is uh, as a test bed. We start with this, and then we later uh, use on the internet. This is more challenging. And for semantic, uh, sorry, we uh, this is uh, we for cross semantic we start. Uh, this is useful uh, semantic matching and cross segmentation. And later on, we use a more in, a challenging data set, inter, uh, internet data set for cross segmentation uh, evaluation. And for semantic matching, we use uh, um, the, uh, the typical benchmark data set for evaluation. So, so here are some results. So basically, these are the standard, uh, the conventional method that based on, um, based on handcraft feature. And then these are the uh, recent method based on um, the features. And, but th this requires strong uh, supervision for semantic matching. Uh, basically, you have to annotate those images for, for training. And for our method, this is based on weak supervision. 
and the results are uh, better or, or at least as good as the state-of-the-art method based on strong supervision. So this is the average with this Pascal and then, and so yeah, so these are, so basically uh, overall you perform rhythm uh, quite well. When you solve these two problems at the same time, uh, the, uh, the, the conclusion we have is that basically if you have mask and certain days will help uh, in terms of uh, semantic matching. And uh, of course we pay the price of um, have um, use more uh, GPU cycle to compute the mask. Or the, or the segmentation. And so these are the results for um, core segmentation on the TSS data set. So uh, some of them are based on, these are based on the um, conventional uh, features. And later on, I'll show you some, uh, with, with internet data set, we will, I'll show you the result that we compare with method, a recent method based on end-to-end um, -end trainable uh, deep models. Okay, so these are some um, usual results. So basically what we find is that, uh, as I mentioned, with uh, semantic matching, then for core segmentation, you, we tend to have a, we tend to have a larger um, coverage than uh, if you typically, if you do, if you just use, um, if you do not use semantic matching and you just directly solve core segmentation, then uh, we typically we only pick up the, the uh, the this most discriminant part, and this this problem is also uh, in another work we are another paper we are, we are going to present at CPR this time. We also discuss similar issues for CAM and for class activation uh, module or model, and that one typically pick out uh, the most discriminated pixels, but it tend not to cover the whole object um, region. So. So the, the question is how do you leverage uh, other information so that you can uh, maximize the coverage and also you, you still uh, do not, well, you, you basically want to cover um, as many pixels belonging to the foreground object as possible. And so uh, I don't have time to describe this to you, but if you're interested, if you're interested you can look up our CVPR uh, paper on this. And so this is the result on core segmentation on the internet data set. And again, so the, the, uh, by summing these two, uh, both core segmentation and semantic matching at the same time, then we, we tend to have better result. And certainly you can, um, for detail, you can, re you can read our paper and uh, the code is also available and the trend model are available. So you can download and, and test them. And, you can search one of uh, one of us, either my name or the other, uh, or entry in the first author, and you can uh, find the paper, and the code should be there. Okay, so again, so these are uh, results we find for course segmentation. We tend to have a, a more coverage, and and so then the results are better. Okay. Well, these are this table is probably too small, but um, yeah, you 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 can read it off, offline. And likewise, um, so these are the uh, method that we these are semantic. Uh, we compare with deep uh, state of the art um, the models for semantic matching, and these are typically based on strong supervision, and by solving. Not only semantic measurement, but also segmentation at the same time, we tend to have a better result. Okay, so this is on, uh, for semantic, uh, so, well, this is on uh, another data set. Okay. Um, okay. And some visual result. Again, so the, the trick for semantic, the um, conclusion for semantic metric is that if we have mask, then we tend to focus more on foreground. We don't we are not, um, uh, we are not, um, well basically we, the method will not be uh, misled by the background clusters. And so, so in the paper, we also discuss uh, uh, the parameters and see whether they are sensitive or not. And so typically they, for each parameter, they are, they, 
operate, they perform quite well within a, a reasonable range. So basically, all the hyperparameters can be set within a certain range. And so, uh, and for each task, so for semantic matching, we find the most important hyperparameters are matching cycle consistency and transitivity uh, cycle consistency. So, uh, uh, transitivity consistency. So this is not surprising. And for course, for course limitation, the most important um, loss uh, parameter are again non um, not surprising. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, contrasted loss and uh, cross network um, loss. And we also so there is so this is between the. Uh, there is threshold that we use to compare the uh, perceptual law, uh, law, well, the perceptual contrastive loss in the main in feature space uh, using the object image and also background image. And so it's, this just goes to show that this parameter is also reasonably uh, stable. We, uh, if uh, it performs reasonably well within a, a wide range. Okay. So the limitation of this method are as follows. So basically, this our method still uh, do not um, may not work perform well for image that contain multiple object instances. So this is something that we are working on. And for semantic matching, um, predict only one transformation. So presumably, you probably can bet you may be better off to find some averaging among several um, predictions. And for objects cross implementation, uh, our method may fail if there are uh, background patches that are, are visually similar. Well, this is also not surprising to see. Okay, so as I mentioned, so our feature work, so we are working on uh, extend this work so that we can um, we can accommodate multiple instances and. Uh, several years ago, we for matching we also did that for multiple instances, but uh, we haven't. That was back in um, two thousand twelve. So we at that time, well, at that time we did not uh, use a different feature. So now we have this. We want to uh, extend this uh, using similar trick for uh, for that. Okay. So to conclude, so basically uh, in this work, basically the main idea is to solve uh, both semantic matching and object cross segmentation at the same time with weak supervision. And so we basically exploit the information that you can uh, obtain from appearance and segmentation results. So basically mask and appearance. And so that you can interpret between these two. And and try to find consistency, and you can do forward back because if you know one, you can do you most likely know the other, and you can um, you can match them uh, forward and backward, and hopefully you you and if you do it right, then you can uh, obtain better result. So this is the first talk I'm going. To, oh, um, actually I'm out of time. <laughs> is that right? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, so, time, yeah, two forty. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, so um if you are interested you can look up our some other paper and then uh sorry I, I don't I don't have time to to present other stuff, but you know you, you can you can look up our paper on um on, on other work. So yeah, I don't want to take more time. I mean but but um uh but basically uh this will be uh, if you are interested you look up this new new risk paper that we basically we learn we learn, we use a self-supervised learning way to learn a better feature representation uh, from video. And basically, because when you look at, and basically you can think that object move and then there will appear to change. And we use, um, we find a way so that we can exploit the temporal, cor temporal correlation and then uh, solve both region level and pixel level correspondence together. And for this one, basically we presented in, um, this one is uh, we you aside from solving co-segmentation, we also want to find the second part, and we you utilize appearance geometry and semantic together. So not only you can do co-segmentation, but also you can 
uh, find out uh, the, the parts, salient part, and you can find the correspondence. And this one basically we use capturing uh, information for weak supervision. And this one basically we use uh, prior, uh, we use the model we train for a number of classes, for known classes and apply to unseen object classes. So basically we want to adapt the learn model to uh, unseen object category. So thank you, that's all I have. <laughs> Sorry, I take a bit more time. <laughs> uh, no worries. Yeah, it's great to see that you have many more interesting works to share. Oh, yeah, and, and let's look at the chat to see if, if people have any questions. Well, the first question is, uh, does it work on unseen categories compared to previous algorithms? Yes, uh, so for, for that, we propose, um, we, uh, for internet data set, uh, it performed reasonably well um, for some related, up, I mean, so, so basically if you, if those unseen object categories are somewhat similar to the one we train, then yes, it works. And likewise for the IJC or the ACC paper that I briefly mentioned, they also perform well for unseen object category to the extent that, okay, those objects are somewhat similar to what you have seen before. Not, not okay, what I'm saying is, say, suppose you train on monkey, dog, and cat. Uh, let's just, let me put it this way. Yeah, if you train on monkey, dog, and cat, and then, uh, in the test image, it contains lion or zebra, then it, I mean, they perform, then they will perform well. But if you are, if you say, uh, I mean, I, I do not expect the method will perform well. Suppose that we only train on animal classes and we, now we want to, we want to use that to find a, uh, some many measuring also concentration for cars or for airplane. That, most likely won't work well. So to a certain extent, it's, it generalizes well, but not uh, not to the extent that we, we really like yet. Okay, sounds, sounds great. And uh, another audience is asking if, if it's possible to share your slides after the talk. Oh, sure, 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 sure. sure. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, it would be great yeah. Yeah, if you can share and uh, we can post uh, on the website. Yeah, I'll send it to you and then you can do whatever you like, okay? Okay. All yeah. right, that would be great. Yeah, thanks very much, Mingxuan. Thank you, see you then. Yeah.